Today I thought it'd be interesting to go through the different backgrounds of private equity professionals, especially those at top tier firms and at the top of the management at those firms. Uh, the, uh, the point I really want to make is that you can come from different backgrounds, uh, different academic backgrounds, professional backgrounds, and still have a place for yourself in private equity. And just the way that these uh, individuals work themselves up to uh, the highest rungs of a very exclusive and competitive industry. Uh, first, we're going to start with David Rubenstein. Uh, he's co-founder and managing director of Carlisle Group. Um, and he comes from law, actually, uh, which is not, I wouldn't say common, but I, I've seen it many times in private equity where people have a law degree, and uh, this prepares them, prepares them with the technical skills uh, and analytical mind to go into private equity. Uh, it also comes in handy for firms. Uh, they like to have a lawyer on staff, so they're... Uh, pretty well uh, pretty well equip equipped and they're not opening themselves up to uh, legal exposure. All right, so Mr. Rubenstein, uh, magnum cum laude at Duke, and then he was uh, he went into University of Chicago Law School. This is uh, one of the top ten law schools in the country, and he was the editor of the Law Review. So he was pretty committed to practicing law. Uh, probably had not thought of private equity at that point, and then he had a private practice, uh, then he went into government, which this is pretty unusual. I've seen a lot of private practice lawyers go into private equity, but not so much uh, government. And he was uh, he was known as a policy wonk. Uh, I read an article profiling him uh, where he was one of those guys that stays in late in the office, uh, all hours, uh, working all hours of the night, uh, trying to get uh, policy drafted. And he was... Uh, Chief Counsel of the U.S. Senate Judiciary Committee uh, on Constitutional Amendments, and uh, he worked during the Carter administration as Deputy Assistant to the President for Domestic Policy. Uh, and after this, he went to go practice law uh, in Washington. He has worked; he's worked his way up uh, by starting the uh, Carlisle Group. So, as a founder, it's uh, I mean, obviously a little easier to get your foot in the door because you're the one uh, creating the firm. Uh, but it is difficult to get the uh, to get in touch with the wealthy individuals that it takes to start a private equity firm and have investors. And I would assume that he used his political connections uh, that have he. I'm sure he's familiar with uh, wealthy individuals through that. And people who just knew him as a very smart guy and very capable would probably trust him with his money with their money. He also worked in New York, uh, private practice law. So I'm sure he has a lot of uh, connections there where he was able to start his firm uh, with his partners. Now we're going to go on to KKR, uh, another top 10 uh, private equity firm. And we're going to look at uh, Henry Kravis and George Roberts, uh, two very wealthy individuals because they have a very successful company. Uh, they actually, I, I believe they met in uh, the in Bear Stearns, uh, obviously doing a little bit better than, uh, that's another statement. But uh, so, along with uh, Roberts and Colbert, they went on to found the. Uh, uh, th they wanted to uh, really lead in the d uh, division of leverage in acquisitions. Uh, so they're doing highly leveraged deals in uh, in the 70s, which wasn't unheard of. But to do it on the scale I did was pretty impressive. Uh, he comes from the background of economics. This is a major that uh, I see a lot of. Uh, professionals go through uh, economics and then go on to get their MBA. Uh, I think it prepares you pretty well. You understand macro issues a lot better. Uh, and it's it's something a little bit different than just the normal business degree. Uh, then he went on to get an MBA from Ivy League School, Columbia. This is fairly typical. Uh, and I, really, the, uh, the why, why I brought up KKR is that uh, Kravis and uh, Roberts and Colbert well, in Bear, Bear Stearns division uh, of uh, leverage, uh, leverage buyouts, and in this uh, acquisition spot, that's where they all met. That's where they decided that they were smart enough to open up their own company and probably do a lot better and focus full time on buyouts and leverage buyouts. Uh, so Roberts has a, has a similar uh, background, except that he went to the military institute. So this is this is something I, I really have never seen before. But uh, I know that there are people who come from uh, military background. But I've not, uh, not seen someone go from the military institute and then directly into uh, getting a BA. And then he got his uh, Juris Doctorate from the University of California Law School. 
in 1969. And th again, this is a lot of lawyers coming in, uh, especially those that run the firm. I think this has to do with uh, the legal uh, requirements for setting up a private equity firm and being able to manage it, especially at the beginning as a startup. Um, now we're going to go on to Blackstone Group. Uh, Stephen A. Schwartzman, uh, one of the top people in private equity, uh, if not the top. Uh, Blackstone Group hasn't been doing exceptionally well lately, but they are still they have still always been able to generate very strong returns uh, in a way that's really impressive. Uh, he has more of the typical uh, background that you'll see for the top private equity uh, management people, and that is a BA from Yale and then an MBA from Harvard Law School or Harvard Business School. Excuse me. Uh, and just as uh, just as the typical background, he goes into gets his MBA from one of the top schools, and those are just feeders into uh, the top tiers of uh, private equity and also finance. Uh, he specifically went to Lehman Brothers, so he wasn't going directly into private equity as a lot of these people were. Mainly because I think uh, private equity firms didn't have the reputation that they do now as a top spot for private equity or for uh, young professionals. Uh, he began at Lehman Brothers, uh, where he was working at mergers and acquisitions business, and this is pretty typical. You see a lot of people coming from mergers and acquisitions, uh, gives them the background they need, and then they go on to find their own firms. Uh, this happens pretty frequently because they know the business, they've learned it, uh, they spent years doing it, and they like to do it for, uh, on their own rather than having to uh, having to work for Lehman Brothers uh, or another investment bank, investment banking company. Uh, and really what I want to highlight is that Stephen Schwartzman has the very typical, uh, almost cliche, background for a private equity individual uh, in top management position. Now CBC part Capital Partners, this is something I wanted to highlight because uh, as it says our professionals represent over 20 nationalities and operate locally in more than 25 different languages. Now I've kind of harped on this point a few times in past videos and uh, articles that having a language really, uh, really will help you, especially as it's a more global economy now than it was even 10 years ago. Uh, the language experience is incredibly handy and it will really help you in your career, uh, in your career path, opening lots of doors that you wouldn't otherwise have. Uh, and CBC, as you can see, the countries on the side here uh, all represent different countries. Uh, it's like this throughout and the partners, like uh, Hugo van Berkel, is uh, representing the Netherlands, and they're all partners in different areas of the world where they have very unique experience, and they're able to operate specifically in that region and able to uh, focus full time on that. I think that's what makes CBC such a uh, unique firm. Is that they really have an international focus, and as you can see, they come, they recruit from all around. I think that really helps their company because they're able to uh, draw from the top talent from all over the world rather than just focusing on the United States and UK uh, business schools. Now we're going to go on to uh, Bain Capital. Uh, this is one that I thought was particularly interesting because a lot of people think that they can't make the uh, transition into private equity because they have a somewhat uh, unrelated uh, background such as uh, Michael Ward here is managing director at uh, Bain Capital. Um, and he earned a uh, business uh, or a bachelor's of science in accounting and finance, and then uh, BAS in chemical engineer engineering from uh, University of uh, Pennsylvania, and that's pretty unique. But I have seen this uh, in the industry, where you see different individuals working in private equity firms that are just intelligent people and have a drive and understand uh, business, and that he has an MBA really helps him because it takes away the focus on just the fact that he comes from chemical engineering uh, and also that he coupled it with an accounting degree. So if you come from uh, a different background such as chemical engineering, uh, anything, uh, even liberal arts, these can be, uh, these sort of lackings almost can be made up for with a MBA or a focus on a, diff uh, on a double major in uh, undergraduate and I really encourage you if you're considering going into private equity to supplement if, uh, your undergraduate degree if you feel it's lacking in uh, focus on the major and something that's related to private equity to consider working uh, working towards a double major or just going on to get an MBA because that's really going to position you to uh, go into private equity. 
So I think the uh, lessons we learned from looking at these five firms are that they come from very diverse backgrounds. They have degrees in very different, uh, very different subjects. Uh, they've worked at different companies that may have led them to get into uh, private equity, such as mergers and acquisitions units at uh, investment banks. And I think that's pretty typical. But also uh, that you can work in a different profession for multiple years even, like David Rubenstein did, uh, working for the government and for uh, private practice law, and still be able to go into private equity and have success, as all of these firms have had. And I think these are all very good examples of the diversity that is a private equity professional and how it's never too late to uh, consider switching over from a profession or to start making your moves to be better position yourself like Stephen Schwartzman to have the ideal resume for a private equity firm. Alright, I hope this was helpful and we'll have more videos online coming soon at privateequityblogger.com. Thank you.